Welcome to another part of the ISM exercise set Microeconomics, this time with a unit on monopolies. Let's have a look at the exercise. Here we have, a company is the only supplier active in the market for iPhones. Its cost function is, and we have here, 10x squared plus 150. And the demand for iPhones can be described using the following demand function. Let's see here the demand function. Then our tasks, first calculate the profit maximizing output of the monopolist, B, calculate the monopoly price, C, calculate the profit of the monopolist, and finally D, how high would the price and quantity be if there were competition on the market. Let's work our way through this step by step and do, before we really start, some preliminary work. The preliminary work we have to do before means we have to calculate marginal costs and marginal revenues. For marginal costs, well, we take our cost function and take the first derivative thereof. So here we basically have 2 times 10 x and we subtract 1 from the 2 and 150 we omit because there's no x. So we basically have marginal costs of 20 x. For marginal revenues, we have to do a bit more. First, we take our demand function, rearrange this a little bit. So basically starting with this, so that we have a demand function, which is P equals two. So for the first step, subtract the 240. Then the only thing we still need to do is divide by minus one half or multiply with minus two. And we get P equal to minus two X plus 480. If we have this, then we can actually get our revenues because then we just multiply the demand function with P equal to with X. That's what we did here. Factor out. And then well, we're looking not for revenues, but for marginal revenues. So we take the first derivative of this revenue function. Then we have 480. We omit the X because it's only to the power of one. And we have minus two times two X and well, from the two, we subtract one again. So here our marginal revenue function is 480 minus four X. And well, we could have done this a bit faster. We could have taken our rearranged demand function and just multiplied the slope with two because it's basically the same, except that it's twice as steep. Okay, now we have the marginal costs, marginal revenues. So that's all the preparatory work we need. So we can start with part A, the profit maximizing output. For this, we just equalize marginal revenues and marginal costs. That's basically why we just calculated those two functions. We set them equal, then we solve for x. So what we're doing here is just plus 4x, and then divide by 24. So we get profit maximizing output for the monopolist of 20. And that's already part A. So in part B, the monopoly price, what we're going to do is we insert the x we just calculated in A into the demand function. And that's important. We are not inserting this into marginal revenues or marginal costs. We are inserting this into the demand function. So basically the monopolist first decides how much should I produce to maximize my profit. And then he decides, well, what's the highest price I can charge? And that depends on how consumers behave. And well, that's the demand function. So here, we insert the x equal to 20 into the demand function. Here in the rearranged demand function, which makes it a bit easier. Then we have 480 minus two times the 20. We get as a result 440. So the monopoly price is 440. And that's already all there is to part B. So finally in part C, or not finally, but in part C, we are asked about the monopoly profit. And this can be done pretty straightforward. We first calculate revenues, price times quantity, and subtract the costs for the corresponding quantity. So basically here we have the 440 times 20, so quantity times price, 
minus, and then we insert 20 into our cost function. So we have a 10 times and then 20 squared plus 150 equals a profit of 4,650 for our monopolist. Yeah, that's already part C. So it's relatively straightforward what we are doing here. We are only left with part D. How would this situation look like if we actually were having a polopoly, if we actually were having competition? For this, we can think that, or recall, that our supply curve actually is or results from the marginal cost curve. So we have a demand curve, we have a supply curve, so we just set both of them equal. Doing this here, we go with marginal cost equal to demand. And in this case, again, the demand function needs to be equal or needs to be P equal to something. So it's really important that we start with rearranging this in the first step. So we have here marginal cost 20x, demand function 480 minus 2x. So we go with plus 2x, have 22x equal to 480, divide by 22. So we get a polopoly quantity of 21.8181. And this we can insert either into the marginal cost or into the demand function. Here it's a bit easier to insert this into the marginal costs. So we do this here. We have 20 times the 21.8181. So we get a polopoly price of 436.3636. And well, this also makes sense. Why does this make sense? Because that's the point where we can actually control whether we cal calculated all this stuff correctly. Because in a polopoly, the quantity is always larger than in a monopoly. Well, here, polopoly quantity is 21.8 something, and in a monopoly, it was 20. Again, in a polopoly, we also know the price is lower than in a monopoly. Well, here it's 436 something, and a monopoly it was 440. So this looks pretty good, so we can be assured that we are not so far off from the real result of this exercise. And well, there was already part D and there were only four parts in this exercise. So this concludes the whole exercise. And I hope you enjoyed listening to it. And if you're looking for more of these types of exercises, feel free to visit the rest of the exercise set or have a look in the corresponding playlist. I say goodbye and see you next time.